When the historic Portland Korean church went up in flames, there was little hope for the house next door. But today, it's still standing. And the Portland Fire Bureau calling it the save of the year. Now, Queen 6 did report extensively on that massive fire. A lot of eyes focused on that destruction. But think about how they were prevented from spreading to a home that's right next to the church. Yeah, we have that story tonight with our Jenny Young with more on this save that firefighters say was incredible. Jenny? Yeah, calling it the save of the year, even though it was only January 3rd. So when you say right next to the church, it is literally right next five feet, just five feet between the church that was burning in this home. And we're told that firefighters, you can see there on the second story, a uh, minimal damage. There's some char to that siding. It got, in a, uh, got into the attic, it looks like but minimal damage compared to what could have happened out here. We're told that firefighters actually got inside this house, ran a hose through the window. They actually set the hose onto uh, the frame of a futon couch, and we were able to leave that hose uh, drenching the flames so that they could work on the rest, putting out the rest of the fire. When the 3,000 square foot wooden church was built back in 1905, the house next door was built to serve as the home for its minister. Years later, it would become the place where Portland Korean Church held Sunday school classes and programs for people of all ages in Portland's Korean American community. Tassan Kim grew up attending and later even taught Sunday school. It was um, in many ways uh, one of the most effective ways in which social integration and engagement was made possible uh, for people who didn't always feel um, comfortable with their, their language and their English speaking abilities. So I want to thank you so much. Um, this house means quite a bit to me. It's, it's very, very important. And what you all did was um, just absolutely remarkable. So thank you very, very much. Five people now live at this house. We learned three of them were home last Tuesday night when the church started burning. We all were mesmerized at the amount of fire blowing out of the steeple and the concerns we all had for collapse over whether it be human life or elevated power lines. And we kind of lost sight of the heroic efforts put in by the first arriving crews <clears throat> to establish a safe home. Fire investigators say 27 year old Cameron Storer, who goes by the name Nicolette Fate, walked into the Multnomah County Jail last Wednesday night and confessed to breaking into the church, lighting the fire, and walking out to watch the building burn. According to court documents, the suspect told police voices in her head told her to light the church on fire. I asked newly elected city commissioner Renee Gonzalez, who now oversees the fire bureau, how leaders are going to tackle Portland's unresolved mental health and addiction crisis that we know has been the catalyst for countless crimes across the city. The last three years has gotten nothing but worse. So we have structural weaknesses in our city, in our region, in our state. We are failing to confront adequately both mental illness and addiction. So it, it overpowers our fire department, our police department, all of our first responders. Gonzalez says the issue actually came up on a call he and other city leaders had with state lawmakers this morning. It's not lost on them, uh, the crisis we're facing, but we've got to keep it in focus. And uh, we, uh, the other element is we do real well with compassion in the city of Portland. That's a, that's a core value here. Um, but I do think we need to start talking about personal responsibility. Portland's fire investigator also on that at that press conference today said the team was working for arson fires just that night. So that suspect is still in jail on first and second degree arson charges. That person was in court last week being arraigned. They have another court hearing tomorrow. We'll let you know what happens. Reporting live downtown, Jenny Young, Coin Six News. As always.